Only so much I can do, no more. All right, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, 17 verse. And it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Now, right in there, you have a manifestation of the words. Christ upon Calvary. And he fulfilled those words. He was there. Even of John the Baptist. I am the voice of one crying witness. I am Isaiah 40, chapter 40, and verse 1 to 3. I am the word of God. Manifest in human flesh. Absolutely. <clears throat> See, so it even comes down to the prophet. It comes down to you and me. We are the word of God. Because we're part of God. He is the word. We are the word manifest in human flesh. Paul said, your living epistles read and known of all men, but your flesh. <clears throat> See? Now, lest the cross of Christ be made an effect. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness, but unto what to save the power of God. For it's written, I'll destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of the word, this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For... After that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. <clears throat> That's why John was able to say the Logos and talk about God. And Paul was able to say, I, I will reveal to you the God that you, you don't know. And you're trying to worship. But we preach Christ crucified, the Jews a stumbling block under the Jews' Greek foolishness. But under them which are, are called, both Jew and, and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Notice he's, he is called the wisdom of God. And he is the manifester of God. So the wisdom of God is being manifested, and that is God. You come right down to the word. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, the weakness of God is strong. Man. That tells you God can be foolish <clears throat> in the eyes of men. For you see your calling, brethren, not many wise, the fact of flesh, not many mighty or noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty, the base things of the world to confound. And them that are spies hath God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in any present. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Now that's absolute grace right there. God's in it all. <clears throat> that's grace grace is the fact that number one we're here children of God grace number two is we're redeemed back grace number three is where we have this redeemer this mediator intercessor standing there for us right now and now on the throne and God putting everything under his feet that we may be in a rapture out of the graves and glorified at the wedding supper that's grace and I brethren that came to you and determined to now, he said, verse and four, in my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of the power. That, that was the, he came and he proved that he, his word was of God. This is the prophet, sign of the prophet, Deuteronomy 18, that your faith should not stand the wisdom and the power of God. Now, you notice that not the wisdom and but the wisdom of God in the power of God. You cannot separate word and power. And word and power is God. <clears throat> That's omniscience and omnipotence. You can't do it. Now, here's where your thinking has got to go, and we'll get to it. Just keep listening. <clears throat> now, but we, how be it, we speak the wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the prince of this world come, that come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained in, before the world unto our glory. Nobody can get it but the bride which none of the princes were new, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now the Jews and Catholics are fighting right now who killed Jesus. The Bible said that the Jews both crucified and killed the Lord Jesus Christ. So forget about the Catholics. I don't care if the Roman soldier did it. It was, a, it was the Jews that did it because they said crucify him. It wasn't the Romans that said it. They tried to save him. <clears throat> so go oh, the whole bunch of nuts. Pope going up the Via Dolorosa on a nice sidewalk, thump, little thump on his feet. Give me the thump. Oh, God. You, you know, oh, just don't, just don't mind me. I'm sarcastic and I'm just sick in my stomach of this kind of stuff. You know why? Because I'm sick of myself. If I if I can condemn myself standing in the way of God, wanting to use my life, then. 
No wonder I'm biting when it comes to these other things. But as is written, I have not seen or heard neither in the heart of man the thing God appeared to love him. But God has revealed unto, unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man, so the Spirit of man is in him. See, there it is, I told you. What man knows the things of man, so the Spirit of man is in him. See, I told you where the connection was between the senses and down in there, and I forgot to, that till now. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man the Spirit of God. <clears throat> so we've been given it in baptism to feed our souls. The part of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given us of God. Which things also we speak, not in words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. <clears throat> now it tells you right there <clears throat> that you got to leave your own thinking. Your spirit <clears throat> that connects the tissue in all of its wonder, fearfully and wonderfully made, all oh, tremendous mystery, Powerful, connecting down into the soul. <clears throat> you can't get it that way. Your spirit's out of the picture now. <clears throat> your thinking is gone. You can't get it. You can't get it. The spirit alone can give it. Comparing spiritual to spiritual, and that's what I'm doing, you noticed. Now, the, the, the life of the carrot is not the life of a dog. And the life of the dog is not the life of a son of God. But they're all lives. The life in the acorn is not the life in the gnat. The life in the gnat is not the life in the fruit fry, but it's life. And out there are spirits. There's voices. Now watch, which things we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual. <clears throat> but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolish unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, now you are caught between a rock and a hard place. <clears throat> you got a spirit that knows things. You know it by nature. <clears throat> you know it by experience. You know it by being taught. You know it by doing things, experimentation. We experiment and we experience. There's a great difference between experiment and experiential. Being experiential. Experiential means to experience a thing, to experiment, see if it works. <clears throat> but we got all this against us. Now it said, look, you got to get out of the way. If you're going to understand, <clears throat> if you're going to get spiritual truth, understanding, <clears throat> and who can know God? Only on the grounds of the Spirit revealing it to us, <clears throat> which means you cannot put any interpolations or reasonings <clears throat> into revelation <clears throat> by the Holy Spirit if it's truly of God. So what we read here tells us of God's foolishness as well as his wisdom. <clears throat> and foolishness of God, according to man, is the blood sacrifice of his son. When God said in his word, you shall not offer your children as a sacrifice or make them go through the fire unto Moloch, they took that to mean that God did not have the right to do what he did in Isaiah 53. <clears throat> And so as the rabbi today said, I'll just smile and say, well, Jesus, you go your way with your dreams and visions and have a nice day. I have the Torah. What about Isaiah 53? <clears throat> what about Messiah? What about the resurrection? What about the Gentiles coming in? Huh? Well, they got it all figured out. They got it figured out when they take over as a nation, they're going to bring us in finally. They're going to really root to tooty. They got it all wrong. When Christ comes back to rule with a rod of iron is to destroy this earth and we're coming back with him, take over. <clears throat> then we set up a millennium. <clears throat> we set up kingdom worship, kingdom worship. We set up the temple. Around the lamb. Every man with his own household, every man with his own tree, his own arbor, his own brick, so on and so forth. They don't understand. Now listen, there is a way to enter into the spirit of God's or God's mind of understanding.
<clears throat> and we're going to find it here in Romans, the 12th chapter, because that's exactly where it is. And I'll go my way as reading it, and I'll tell you what I think it is, and you can disagree if you want. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, verse 1 of 12, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That means get rid of your body. Give it over to your soul. Because your spirit's got to do what it's supposed to do in that body. Which when it becomes a living sacrifice, <clears throat> the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost now takes charge of the spirit and the flesh. So you don't have to walk in the flesh anymore, but you can walk in the spirit. <clears throat> and walking in the spirit is walking in the mind of God. And you have the mind of God according to the same book of Romans. You are full of the Holy Ghost. That's the 8th chapter. Now it says, which is your reasonable sacrifice? <clears throat> in other words, we have a sacrifice here. We have to give up ourselves on the altar. Now, and be not conformed to the world. <clears throat> to conform to something means you go in its pattern. So that means you've got to go against the pattern, which is naturally in the world, as Paul spoke of over here in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. The world doesn't have it. <clears throat> and your spirit, without the baptism with the Holy Ghost, is bound to take on what all flesh is taken on, which is experience and sense knowledge. But this won't do it. You simply cannot do it. <clears throat> so what are you going to do? Negative. Do not be conformed to this world. <clears throat> and we explain that in 1 Corinthians. But what? Be you transformed. And by the, by the renewing of your mind. <clears throat> Now, in here, the word transformed is wrong. It means to be transfigured. <clears throat> and the Mount of Transfiguration is where Jesus was shown to be completely out of the flesh of man and in the flesh of God under the complete control of the Holy Spirit. And on the Mount of Transfiguration, Brother Branham said, when God spoke and said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased or pleased to dwell in, <clears throat> he said that was the adoption. So now it says here, be you don't be conformed to the world, but come into the adoption. <clears throat> come into the place where you are thoroughly trained by the Holy Spirit <clears throat> to show that you are truly a child of God. So we go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. I'm not going to go to Galatians. <clears throat> I'm going to Hebrews. Because that's the book I believe we should look at. And it says here in 3 to 6, for consider him that endured <clears throat> such contradiction of sinners against himself. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if he would not have endured the contradiction of sinners against himself, which was saying, no, you are not Messiah. <clears throat> no, you are not the prophet. No, you are not the Son of God. No, no way does God reside in you. No way does God do these works through you. No way do you have a correct understanding of Scripture. We are coming against you because you are taking your stand with that word. <clears throat> that you say <clears throat> you have the correct understanding. Now remember, he's vindicated. Your stand is with vindication. <clears throat> your stand was at every contradiction that comes against you. 
Oh, you bunch of idiots down there in Grace Gospel Church, you think you're the only ones. No, we don't think that at all. You believe you're the only ones that know it all. No, we don't believe that at all. We don't believe anything they say. We, because we don't. We're standing on a vindicated word that is far beyond our own belief or anything we've got to do with, with history, with anything. We have a vindicated word. See, I told you vindication stands up. If you don't believe in vindication, you're not in the adoption. I'll tell you that flat. Forget it. <clears throat> Why? Because you don't want to come under the word. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is in the word. In vain do you worship me having for your doctrine, the traditions of men. You can't take what man says, <clears throat> what the congregation says, what the theologians say, you can't do it. Now listen, God has anointed teachers, perfect with the word. God has anointed pastors, perfect with the word, evangelists and pastors and apostles. But when he got a word prophet, all of those five folds, the prophet and all, are under the revealed word of Almighty God by a prophet that's vindicated. <clears throat> so here we are, look at it. Consider him that endured the contradictions, the pointing of the finger, <clears throat> the ultimate degradation, crucifixion and death by those who said, we can't stand what you say about the word. We're the ones that have it and you're wrong. Now, Brother Branham positively preached a sermon on ashamed of him, and it ended up being ashamed of the word. <clears throat> so, consider him that endured the context of sinners <clears throat> against himself. <clears throat> yes, ye be wearied <clears throat> and faint in your minds. Now, listen, fainting in your minds. Be you transfigured. Be you an adopted son. Through your minds. Go back to Romans 12 again. So we know what we're talking about. That's why I took this chapter. But be ye not conformed to the world, but be you transfigured by the renewing of your mind. And the mind and the spirit <clears throat> deals primarily with the senses, with your former education, with everything you think you know, with all of that which can be produced humanly. God is against it. <clears throat> and you got to get rid of it. I said you've got to get rid of it. And you've got to come with grips where you admit that God is right. Every man's word is a lie, but God is right. <clears throat> Consider him. <clears throat> Make him your example. Now watch. Lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Now don't let your minds faint. Let them be renewed. <clears throat> you can get in the adoption now. You have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. He did. He sweat drops of blood. And he even died and his blood was shed. Have you forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children? My son, do not despise the correcting of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved of him. For whom the Lord loves, he chases, scourges every son he receiveth. Now in the Greek tradition, the word teaching and scourging is pretty well the same word. You learn by suffering. Existentialism says that we are here to suffer. The Bible said we suffer with him to be glorified with him. <clears throat> and where is that actual suffering? It's in the mind. It starts there. The mind must be renewed. You've had some renewing already. Because you finally begin to understand that you have a part of God. That your soul is a part of God. That you are seed. The thing that they fought most, I found a <clears throat> man bitter against me. He said, we are not seed. We are not seed. We become seed. Later on, he had to admit he's wrong. Did he apologize? By no means, he never apologized. <clears throat> I told him to get out of my hair, out of my face. In fact, he was a bird brain that invited himself to a dinner to which he was not even invited. The devil was not invited to the Garden of Eden either. <clears throat> 
Tatumney's dinner party. You let that bird in and you'll see what happens. Don't have any time with that kind of stuff. Just kiss him goodbye. Say, thank you, good, you're not seed I am. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <clears throat> yeah, I take a tough stand. You want to tell me something? Don't try to tell me anything unless you, unless you know what I know. Or you can help me with something. He said, Brother Vail, Brother Branham said so-and-so. Fine, tell me where he said it. Let's get the context. <clears throat> the guy that used the quote of Brother Branham. Brother Branham said, he'd all be here to pray and read the Bible. God would not send a prophet. Then where did Malachi 4 come from? Give me the context. Why did Brother Branham say it? Under what circumstances the same man called Brother Branham a shuck? Just waiting to get the tape. <laughs> And I've got a clue to the indication. You got a clue to the indication? Huh? If you haven't, forget it. Amen. Keep your tape rolling. Let me tell you right now, except for the indication, I'd be gone. I wouldn't have a leg to stand on. I'd have nothing to say. I'd have nowhere to hide. I wouldn't know anything. Amen. You say, well, Brother Vail, don't Brother Vail me. Look me in the eye and tell me what you got. I'll stand over and confess everything. If you've got the guts to stand beside me and confess, or just yap. I call your bluff on it. You can call my bluff anytime you want. I'm not a nice person, a good person, a beautiful person, this, that, and the other thing. I have one thing. God's word doesn't lie. He is the word. And he sent his word today to heal me. He rose with healing in his wings. There's a rapture coming, and I'm going to be part of it. Did have you forgotten? <clears throat> The Lord loveth whom the Lord loveth, he chases. Scourge every son he receives. If you endure chastening, if you endure this that starts in the mind now, and you take the word of God absolutely as it says, and don't try to figure it, in the first place, you haven't got what it takes to figure it, and I don't have what it takes to figure it. I've got to have the Holy Ghost take what Brother Branham said and reveal it to me and take it back and forth to the scripture to settle it there in order to teach it. <clears throat> and believe me, I better partake of what I'm teaching and I want to partake of it. You bet your sweet life I want to be a partaker of it. Because the husband would be first partaker of the field and the fruit <clears throat> before he gives to anybody else. So I'm going along here teaching the best I can. <clears throat> To, to understand these things and know wherein we stand. Now, if you are without chastisement, correction, and he corrects you in such a way that you will not forget, <clears throat> so that you will pause like he that has ceased from, he that is, uh, suffers in the flesh ceases from sin. <clears throat> when you're brought up short by God like I've been so many times, you say, okay, 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 we'll go that way. Remember, he does not make you go against your will. He just makes you willing to go. When we pray we don't twist his arm, he twists our arm. <clears throat> now it said, furthermore, he said, if you if you're, if you're, if you're, won't partake of this training of God, you're bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh who credited us. We gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? <clears throat> and isn't our spirit of him? Our soul, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. <clears throat> so we're getting into the adoption. And it starts in the mind. The greatest battle ever fought is in the mind. <clears throat> it's where you take that mind and bring it under control of the Holy Ghost. So that the spirit now can take everything that is here, the word, the reality, and put it down into our souls so that it now comes back and influences our spirit. When Brother Branham said the soul's the nature of the spirit, he said giving it, a, he said giving it a, a, an influence, <clears throat> an atmosphere. The spirit is not a non-entity. It's not an aura. It is not an atmosphere. It is a true entity that gives the atmosphere to the spirit. Otherwise, the spirit is all of the world. <clears throat> now with that soul, with the Holy Ghost down there, working with the spirit, <clears throat> can take everything and bring it backward. And when it does, 
the revealed word begins to renew your mind. So now through the renewed mind, which is a mind of God, which is a truly revealed word, the interplay back and forth will put you in the adoption <clears throat> and bring you into the transfiguration, which you must have in order to be in the rapture. Piling word upon word upon word. <clears throat> now, no chasing for the present seems joyous. It's a tough battle. But grievous, is hard on us. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised thereby. <clears throat> so now we're fighting <clears throat> this great spiritual battle. Not the physical, it's the spiritual. And it's in between the soul and the brain where the spirit is. And you've got all of these things in there. Now, who's going to lead us? Are we going to say, okay, now, <clears throat> and here's where you see I'm so strong in vindication. I say, eh, what does it matter what I think? What does it matter what I see? What does it matter what experience I've had? Here's the Sith, the Lord. Amen. I'm going to go by that. And you come to the place <clears throat> where, as I've said, <clears throat> it's no longer a matter of anything, but it is the Word. Why? Because when God came and did it all, it was for one purpose, the Word. Then shut up, sit down, listen, and shut up some more, listen some more, and receive it. But you can't unless it's given to you from above. Amen. Because this is not horse food or monkey food or carrot fertilizer. It's the Word of the living God. Now, since you understand what I'm saying, <clears throat> God is spirit. We are nothing but spirit and tissue. And when it all blows over, we are nothing but soul and tissue because the real we is the soul. The spirit only allowed of God, temporary, to bring vitality to the body and the soul in a union, so brain and all these attributes and wonderful things in us can function. <clears throat> but you've got to put it to one side when the Holy Spirit comes because it's not useful. And that great battle means you bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, who is the Word. See, we're getting there now. <clears throat> all right. This is what I'm saying. Refuse your own thinking or reasoning for the word. No more comparisons or theories. Understand once for all that spirit is real. That spirit is real. My reality is not my flesh that bleeds my flesh that feels, my temperament that gets out of way, my angers, my frustrations, none of those things is the real person. The real person is that little spark of God, that little soul in there that is a part of God. <clears throat> That's the real me. I'm surrounded now in flesh that can be tempted, is tempted, and falls. To backslide a thousand times a day, to sin a thousand times a day. Frustrations are there on every hand. And there is only one way out for the Holy Ghost to work because the Word is the conduit. God is in His Word. He is not in His church. Amen. I don't care if they teach north of us and south and any place else. Forget it. <clears throat> and I don't care if they take John 1 and 1 and say, and quote Brother Branham word for word, then turn around and make Jesus the Word. What else could Jesus be but Word if His Father is Word? A horse's baby is a horse because it comes from a horse. Right. And if God is Word, His children are Word. Right. Oh, God, have pity on these people. Sit every years and years and years, and they won't listen to anything because they're so puffed up with their degrees and everything else. God knows they can't listen. Give me some humble person in a little storefront for a church. Maybe we can talk. See, I don't have any background. You might think I do because I've got a, a, a marvelous and almost a marvelous use of words. See, they're, they're daggers and they're pointed and they go right to the truth and I express what I want to express. That doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean a thing. I struggle the same as you do. I have to sit and listen. 
What comes to me, I got to analyze and lay out and say, what is it, Lord? What is there in there, see? So, you can't, so I have to do what you do. <clears throat> None of your own thinking or reasoning. It's gone because I've got the revelation. No more comparison or theories. No more experiences. What good are they? I can't compete with God. Well, say, I'm competing with Brother Brown. You idiot. You supernatural idiot. You are sick. Brother Branham doesn't have any competition. You're competing with God. You are of the devil. Yes, you are of the devil. Satan competing with God. That may sound tough, but I speak the truth and I line on. Understand once for all that spirit, spirit is real. But since it is another dimension, another thing entirely from us. We have to accept what God says about himself as to his own essentiality, his spirit. But what kind, what like? What does he say? <clears throat> what kind of a spirit? Well, it's Holy Spirit, of course. But he says, his word is spirit and life. And the word is he himself, as life signifies power and ability. <clears throat> the very word life signifies motion. If you talk, say, what is alive? It is that which has motion, which eats and drinks. It gives off waste. It reproduces itself. God is life, but he's not that kind. <clears throat> but God being life does reproduce himself. He has children. The only begotten is the first one, the uniquely begotten one. Absolutely it is life. It's life that is of God and it's not this kind of life because we cannot take his life within us <clears throat> and reproduce it. Only God can reproduce it through us because it's all one common lump of clay now and nobody knows where the life is in what individual and where it's going to come forth. For the stand foundation of God stand the sure. The Lord knoweth them which are his, and nobody else knows. <clears throat> See? So you say, what is that spirit? That is the spirit of God that we are dealing with. And since God is in his word, and his spirit and his word are life, now listen, here's where you got to watch. Can you now at this point put everything else out of your mind? and come to the conclusion that Brother Branham came to and constantly said that God is the Word. Now right away you're going to balk. Well, just a minute. Word is a unit of communication. <clears throat> Word is a unit of language. Unit is a dead thing that talks about something else. This, you see, that's not so. This Word is Logos. The life in it expressing. And go to your Bible, you'll see almost every place where Paul speaks, it's Logos, not Rima. He's telling you the word, no word of God is void of power. Brother Branham said God is not in his church, God is in his word. The conduit of the Holy Spirit is the word. So therefore, if the shell of God is the word, the conduit, then what is in the conduit? God. And he's identified by what? Word. <clears throat> so therefore I can say <clears throat> without hesitation, <clears throat> like Brother Branham, God is the word. Does it bother me? Certainly it bothers me because I'm an idiot. Does it give you a problem? Certainly because I'm a jackass. Just like you. But I'll admit it, you don't want to because you're wonderful people. Sure it bothers you. You have a job with it, don't you? Let's be honest. But we're dealing with the spirit. We're dealing with God. We're dealing with a dimension we don't know one thing about. And we haven't got any one way of knowing it unless a prophet tells us. And he's vindicated to do it. So Brother Branham said, the world to be <clears throat> judged by one Christ Jesus. And he's the word. 
then he is not talking about a man holding a book that is the word. He's talking about a man who is the word. Now he's not talking about Jesus because God's on the white throne. God is the word. God is that one who came down here <clears throat> and he showed himself in existence through a prophet. And he let us know it was he himself and it was according to the dimension. God's own limitations, God's own definition. Huh? Wasn't it? It certainly was. And how did he come forth? He came forth by word, perfectly <clears throat> seen, really understood. Now here's what I'm working on. And I'm telling you, I have to work on it. And I'm leaving you with this thought tonight. Because there's nothing else I can leave with you. My thought is that we have to learn. The spirit is a dimension <clears throat> that we are not familiar with. We have to be told. And if we are children of God, we will believe it. As Brother Branham said, how can you say you're a child of God and full of the Holy Ghost and not say amen to every single word? And that's where that rabbi is tonight, the same serpent seed that crucified Jesus Christ and the same serpent seed is in Christianity, crucifying the Son of God afresh today because they will, say, will not say what the vindicated word said. They will not believe in a vindicated prophet. <clears throat> Even though it's 100% scripture and you rub their noses in it, there's no way they can see it. They got an answer for it. I remember my nephew when I gave him Deuteronomy 18 and being one of the Armstrong Church of God brethren type, he went immediately to Deuteronomy 13. Yeah. His mother believes, but he doesn't. <clears throat> Where is he today? Who knows? That's his business, not mine. My children don't believe. That's their business, not mine. When I get there, my family will be you that believe. We'll see our real paternity. And our real maternity, our paternity is God, and our maternity is the new Jerusalem, of which we are segment this very hour. Brother Branham said, Holy Spirit, God, is the word. Not as man sees it or uses it, but as it is told us by God himself. As Paul uses Logos almost exclusively <clears throat> as referring to the Lord, as referring to the word, God, not Rima. No, some, it's used there some, but not much. We must alter our thinking and accept the fact that he is the word until it becomes natural to us. At this point, <clears throat> I can take every doctrine that I've understood and talk to you here. Immediately anything comes up, you talk about rapture, I have the three faces down pat. I have the shoulders, I believe no teacher is teaching it. Because when Brother Branham said it, and my spirit said, that's gone too far, you can't receive it. My soul answered back, when was he ever wrong? And I said, shout is the message. And I can take you now to, 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 to 1 Corinthians 15 and show you absolutely the shout is the message, the word of God, putting the church in order, correcting every error as the seal is done, and now we are ready for a rapture. Piling word upon word into the transfiguration, going on now. And it cannot go on without this word. Remember, it was said in Deuteronomy concerning the entrance into the Canaan land, and they said, the people in that land will say, oh, what a great word these people have. And we, and the people will wonder. And they say, oh, what a great word, meaning God is his own word. He is the word. And what he did, according to his own desire of grace for you and me, we go marching it as a seven church age, never having going down to the ground. Some of you will be standing here immortalized. What more could you want? How can you doubt that he is not the word? <clears throat> See, it is a renewed mind in the thinking thereof. So we must use it and understand. understanding will come as we go along. And that word as God is in our behalf because God is Jehovah, the life of the saint or the child of God. So when we refer to Jehovah <clears throat> Elohim, remember the relationship of God to the individual, the strong one bound by an oath, he reveals himself wherein lies that oath, which is that word, 
and he is his own oath. The Bible said so because God could swear by no greater. He swore by himself and stood there openly as the surety. God himself, his word. You talk, take the word of God, you've got God. <clears throat> you defy the word of God, you defy God. You deny the word of God, you deny God. You disbelieve the word, you disbelieve God. Come on, isn't that the truth? What else do you know about God? <clears throat> Where are you coming from? See? <clears throat> All right. Every attribute of Jehovah, Redeemer, Peace, Sanctifier, Righteousness, Present, Shepherd, Provider, Healer, Banner, everyone. All these word attributes for God has come forth a ma as manifesting himself to us in all of this exactly according to the word. Now, what is God? He's Jehovah Redeemer. <clears throat> well, isn't he? Isn't that his name? Then isn't he that word? Tell me if he's not Jehovah Redeemer. Tell me what he is. Would you know except outside a word? Would you know except God cloaked himself in the form to be Redeemer? Would you know anything about healing? He's the healer. <clears throat> he's the provider. He's everything in the Jehovah complex. There's nine of the three threes which make absolute perfection as to, as to what God is and his essentiality and what he does for us every single time. <clears throat> How would you know? You cannot know God apart from his word, period. Now you know me according to looking at me because I am in here. Then if you cannot know God apart from God's word, you are looking at God and that is God when you have his word. Well, is he in there or is he not? What does Logos mean? <clears throat> it means that God is the vitalizer, the progenitor, the perfecter, the birther, originator, whatever you want to call it, of what you see, what is there. Now, what is there? What have you seen? You've only seen the word. God is in his word. And as I said, when the Bible said he sent his word to heal them, you, you tell me a word, does barn word make a barn? Does cow make a cow? Only if God said it. Then how can there be healing in a word unless God is in the word and therefore then God is the word because he is the healer. <clears throat> God came. And now you got the fact that Jesus is also the word. What word is he? Brother Branham said the prophets were part of the word and Jesus was all of the word. So he is all of that word that's here from Genesis to Revelation that God spoke of the, the one in flesh, the son of God manifested. <clears throat> sure. Joseph waited. What, what is that? Psalm? What is that Psalm now? My goodness me. Psalm 105. It better be. My memory's gone haywire. Psalm 105 and verse 19. Until the, now here, he, he, verse 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. I want to ask you a question. <clears throat> Didn't I read in the book of Hebrews that God tried you? It says the word tried you. Now look, we must come to the place where we accept that he is the word, even as Brother Branham said. This is going to take time to get rid of the cobwebs. To get rid of the time to say, am I associating it right? It doesn't matter what you think. The thing is, say it. Believe it and know it and wait for God to open up as a complete revelation as it was to Brother Branham. Here is where we are, we are missing <coughs> reality. <clears throat> but reality is ours on the grounds that we can reach out and apprehend it, providing it was given us from above to receive it, for no man can receive unless given him above. As Brother Branham once said, the faith that you and I use to come to Jesus is a common faith like hyssop. But on the other hand, let's remember this, as many as were ordained, and only those ordained believe. So that common faith is only common to the saints, even as the Bible says, the common faith. 
Then you get a supernatural faith born into you in First Peter, I think it is, or Second Peter, first chapter. Add to your faith virtue and so on down the line. The stature of perfect man. <clears throat> now listen, <clears throat> all these word attributes for, for God has come forth in a manifest a manifested that manifested himself to us in all of this exactly according to the word. Jehovah Redeemer, Jehovah Shepherd, he is the word. So we take up the spirit of God's own understanding that he gave us, the strong one bound by an oath. He is therefore irrevocable, unchanging, living word that positively manifests and accomplishes what only God can accomplish because he is his word. Now, understand where I'm coming from also. <clears throat> I am giving you the understanding that positively, word in itself would be ineffective. Word must be living. Word must be vitalized. Word must be not only pronounced, but carried out. And believe me, <clears throat> when God pronounces something, it is carried out by God. And you are not, therefore, maximizing the power, you are maximizing the word. And when I say maximizing the word in contrast to maximizing the power, everybody wants to maximize God as power instead of maximizing as the word. In other words, referring to his power rather than the word which the power is bound by. So the essentiality of God is what? Word which must manifest and come to pass. For no word of God is without power, and no word will return to him unfulfilled. How could it, how could it be otherwise? We, our word, will return to him fulfilled. How could he? Now, these thoughts are going to be strange. I am not William Branham. I am not other men. But I know that he is the word. And there is no chicanery about it. There is no fooling. <clears throat> there are no illusions. It is the truth. Can I therefore realize that since it's the truth, it is my truth. I am a part of it. And I must make myself come under obedience to it that he is that word. And thereby in renewing my mind, I will become transfigured. <clears throat> I will become in the adoption. I will be a part of this resurrection and this great extraordinary process and culmination of immortality when the Bible said they are there at the end time who will not see death <clears throat> but they'll be changed in the moment tonight at the last trumpet the trumpets will sound that in Christ shall rise first and we which remain alive will be changed and called to be of the Lord these are the things that are absolutely essential because the Bible said, they shall know their God. And Brother Branham said, the great end time revelation, one God must be baptized in his name, rather than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my question is, what God do you have in mind? What God? He is that word. He is that one at every stage and every place manifested, took that covering, and he became it. Even as Brother Branham said, this is God in print. So this, I, I say, the, <clears throat> the understanding we have, we struggle with the mind here. We struggle because of our senses, because of our preconceived notions and ideas. Because you cannot apprehend that two and two make four until you understand that one and one make two. That four is one and one, that's two, and two more ones, one, two, three, four. In other words, you go from what you know further learning. But in our case, we have to count as dung, manure, not just superficial, but deadly contaminant in our minds, what we further had and we based our thinking on. Now, if you knew tonight that you had a deadly bacteria in your body and there was a way to get rid of it and you'd be healthy, you'd do it. That's the way it is with the Word of God tonight. He is the Word, and I know that He is, and my understanding is coming, is coming. 
but I have to bring every thought into captivity to it. I don't want to be like Brother Branham. I just want to believe the way Brother Branham believed as a child of God because he was merely the partaker of the first fruits that he gives to us. Moses ate the same manna he gave to the people. I'm going to have the same food that Brother Branham had. You and I are going to have the same food identical. And that's my thought tonight, and we will grow in this thing, because I know I am not satisfied with it, and I'm sure you're not satisfied yet, but the point is, he is the word, and it is not simply a phrase or a unit. We're dealing with a reality. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight as we go to the communion of the Lord table, asking you for your help to understand what we have talked about tonight, because we know there is something in here that is a great mystery, Lord. It was just like we took the shout to be the message, and now it is so absolutely clear every single word, because we believed it. And as we believed it, Lord, you gave us the uncomplicated truth. And we are so happy that we know that we know. And we know tonight also that the, the, our prop brother Branham vindicated. He was God to us. You manifested in and through him. And he always said, the world will be judged by one Christ Jesus, and he is the word. And we know that is absolutely the truth. We know that he said the messenger and the message is one. We know that is the truth. We know he said the prophet of the living word of God manifested. We know that that is the truth. Right down the line, and Lord, we know that you are the word. And we know, Father, that though you are not obligated to make it perfectly clear to us, we believe that it is in your will to be made perfectly clear to us until it becomes that beautiful tie post as all these others have become to us. And we praise you for it, Lord, that you should allow us to glimpse yourself and to know you. Perhaps as no other generation is known. I hope that's not true. But I hope, Lord, that we will know you and we must know you according to what this generation will know. And unto thee, Lord, will give the glory how beautiful it will be to rest in the hallowed sanctity of that revelation. Unto thee we give glory. May the peace of God abide in our hearts and minds. In Jesus Christ we pray, amen. I want to just read over here for a minute in uh, the book of Ex Genesis, rather. <clears throat> and it has to do with the offering of Isaac. <clears throat> we'll read this for the uh, Lord's Supper. And um, it said, um, Here Isaac said unto Abraham, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb uh, for the sacrifice, the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they, see, Abraham's faith was there already. Uh, and they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. The angel of the Lord called him out of, heaven, out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do any harm, do anything to him. For now I know you fear God, seeing you have not withheld thy son, <coughs> thine only son. <clears throat> now you notice in here the strange language right off the bat. The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven. And then he said, For I know thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son. Now, you know, there's, there's always a great problem in reading the Bible as to whether you believe that's simply an angel, or you believe that's Jesus Christ, or you believe God himself is the angel of the covenant, which sometimes he is. And so when you, when you see these things here, it's, it's a little difficult to, to uh, place them all. But there's where I just disregard all these little places that, 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 that question, have a little question mark as to what personality. It really doesn't matter so much. The thing is, if an angel of God brought a message, Jesus brought a message, an archangel brought a message, or a dove from heaven brought a message, and it was strictly from God. It wouldn't make any difference. The message is God. 
because it came from God. And only God could, could, could say it. And that would have to be a part of him because he's a strong one bound by an oath. So you see, it's always a matter of that strength is not what you look about God. It is the word. It's that word. And being God, the word, God fulfills himself in the people. <clears throat> so Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. <clears throat> and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering uh, in the stead of his son. Now, the last verse is the big verse. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. That's the Lord will provide. Now listen, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Now the mount of the Lord, I believe, is Zion, where the new Jerusalem is, and you will see on the throne the provided land. Now Brother Bram's most famous sermon on the whole Jehovah complex was Jehovah Jireh, right on this very subject right here. Now it says, to this day, in the mount of the Lord, <clears throat> the sacrifice of Jesus, God's provision, the man of such character, as we saw in the sermon on identification, will be there on the throne with the nail prints in his hand, in his side, in his feet, and in the brow. Never, ever changing. The provision of God is there. And remember, communion will be taken until we go to the millennium and start it all over again. Because there will never, ever, ever, ever be a time when the Lamb is not honored as the Lamb. And remember, He is the Word. The Word Lamb, the Lamb Word. Complete fulfillment. God manifest, God in Him, and He was a sacrifice. And He was, and He was actually, you might say, the altar upon which His life, His body was the altar upon which His life was poured and given for you and me. And He will be on the throne in the New Jerusalem. And remember, according to Hebrews 12, we are now approaching Mount Zion. And there's not the thunder and fear, but it's a joy and rejoicing and the glad marching to Zion, of which we are a part and a portion. So tonight, as we <clears throat> take the emblems, the, what represent the broken body and the shed blood, we recognize that this is based in the eternal concept of God, the Lamb, God's provision. And God's provision is of grace. Abraham didn't have to do anything, really, except take the ram in the thicket and kill it. Uh, he didn't have to sacrifice himself or his family. And... The Bible is very clear that God doesn't want our sacrifice. In fact, he gets very fed up with them. He gets very fed up with the fastings. And it just becomes an abomination of stink in his nostrils. Why? Because as Brother Branham said, they're always adding to it. Never can let God have his way. Got to add to it. Well, that's what I love so much about this vindicated message. We, don't have, we can't take from it. We don't add to it. We stand right here. And we read the scripture, we see everything lines with the prophet. See the prophet right in this very day preaching Jehovah Jireh, making the biggest thing out of it. Now I can prove it, you just get the sermons, you're going to find them. That was one of his favorites right down the line. And he said right there in the holy city, you're going to see it right there, Jehovah Jireh. God the provider. And what did Brother Branham say? He said, the pillar of fire above the throne, and before they call, he answers, Jehovah Jireh. The provider. And what do we do? We celebrate it right here. My, see how the whole Bible comes together? I, that's one thing I love in teaching the Word. It all comes together. Takes a little while sometimes. Even I get confused, but that's all right. I'm not a prophet. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I teach. Precept. Line up online. 
Here's a little, little building a house, foundation, superstructure, do the finishing. Finally hang the drapes, so all over. I believe that. I believe we're getting there. Well, the Lord bless you. Let's rise. <clears throat> Brethren, come forward. Taking a long time tonight, but that's all right. You'll have Brother John for 30 minutes tomorrow. All right. Shall we just bow our heads? Now, Heavenly Father, as we stand here, these elements we have seen again tonight, the glory of this little memorial that has been left behind, this commandment, reaching right into eternity. How wonderful that we can stand here and know what it is about and partake and realize your grace, which is founded in you and continues to stand and will stand. Freely has been given to us. Freely we receive these emblems again. And happily, Lord, we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ that you provided for us. May you receive glory tonight, Lord. And may the revelation of yourself which, for which we hunger to come so perfectly to us. You are the Word. And we are a part. That's all we ask. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. <clears throat> Yeah.